for my brothers, never had an ear to hear me. These the bricks for our sisters, help us build it. If I could be a black fly on the wall, I can hear and see it all and have the mind of a god. Black, 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 black. Fly, 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 fly. Black, black, black. Seven Twelve Vodka, distilled only once from Blue Ridge Mountain water, alkaline and gluten-free. Seven Twelve Vodka is perfect for sipping or mixing when you want to enjoy the finer things in life. Serve up Seven Twelve Vodka and reflect with us on the happenings that have made you who you are. Welcome to another episode of Black Fly on the Wall. I'm Lyde. I'm your host. What's up, Yolanda? Hi. What, 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 <laughs> come kick it with the fellas. Um, this episode is How Does a Man Supposed to Grieve, right? Got some amazing people here with me, uh, as always. We're going to start to my far left, far left. Lakim, introduce yourself. My brother. What's, up, what's up, everyone? I'm Lakim uh, from New York City, engineer by trade. Uh, it's a pleasure to be amongst Black you. Black Engineer of the Year. Yes. Right? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Big Bless. it up. Congra- Thank congratulations. Thank congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. Rod, introduce yourself, my man. Hey, I'm Rod Brown. Um, I said Rod Brown, uh, country boy from North Carolina. Nice, nice. In Game Podcast. In Game Podcast. You know, so, so make sure y'all tap in. Out. Yeah, make sure you tap in, subscribe, Appreciate follow, that. download. Um, amazing content. Um, and and I, I like what you boys are doing. Thank you, man. Yeah, good Appreciate stuff. It. Good stuff. Make sure Appreciate you all it. tap in with that. Yolanda, introduce yourself. Well, I'm Yolanda, aka Yozio, Yo, on Instagram, and I'm an inspirational blogger. I also am the director of marketing and communications for Girl Scouts, North Carolina Coastal Pines. Um, I have recently written a devotional called "Girl, You Got This," and you know I got a bunch of different stuff going on. But that's nice. it today. I love it. I love it. Um, we, this episode right here is sponsored by Seven Twelve Vodka. Um, they're an amazing uh, sponsor and supporter of, of Black Fly on the Wall. Um, 712 is, is essential because with 712, it's all about the 712. Is, is, it represents the genesis, right? We all have a, a home address that we may be able to relate to um, with Maurice, the owner of 712. 712 is his home address, so he ties that into all of the challenges, all of the things that make him who he is and shapes him to make him inspirational, um, we, my, my number is 118. Your number may be 201. Whatever it may be, you're able to resonate with the brand and be able to tap in and see how the brand uh, intertwines with your DNA and who you are as a man or a woman. Um, you also like 712 because it's richness, because of its, uh, the high pH, it being gluten-free, it being alkaline. Um, it's just an overall amazing brand, and um, we like to give a cheers. At every beginning of every episode, it's sacred. You know, we like to make sure that we start everything off with amazing energy. Um, and I think this is going to be an amazing conversation. Um, how does a man supposed to grieve, right? Interesting topic because grief is just something that isn't always discussed. It's always observed, right? Um, sometimes life has an ability to push us into a corner or push us into a space where grief is the only emotion that you know how to enact, right? Um, I think grieving is a healthy process to go through um, if you are able to go through it in a healthy way, right? Sometimes whenever you grieve, negative negative habits develop. But that's why I think it's essential for us to be grounded and for us to be educated and for us to be vulnerable um, prior to experiencing traumatic experiences that push us sometimes into grieving. Um, I think, you know, this episode right here was inspired by my best friend. Like, for years, he was asking me, like, man, y'all need to do an episode on grief. Y'all need to do an episode on grief. Um, He had lost his maternal grandmother, and uh, that was something that was really um, startling and shocking to him. And as I watched uh, another black man go through the process of loss and grieving, I said, you know what, It's, it's time to do it. Um, especially after, you know, we went through a tumultuous two years of COVID. Uh, we all know we all know somebody that lost somebody or we lost somebody close to us. Right. And so I think um, it's important for us to, as we see that, that life is so precious um, and life is, um, is an opportunity that's given to us, it's not something that we create. I think it's important for us that whenever we go through these challenges of loss, we go through these challenges of ups and downs, 
we know whenever, or guess what? Whenever I hit that roadblock, I know who I, what, what type mm-hmm. of emotional uh, tactics to enact to take care of myself and to really, really uh, harness the healthy energy to go through that process, right? So Yolanda, I think you joining us as the woman of the group, so thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you, especially with you having a son, what is your perspective on how a man is supposed to grieve? So with me having a son, um, a black son, Mm -hmm. I think it is important for him to actually understand what grief is. And I think sometimes um, men in our community, our black and brown community, they think grief is only happens when someone passes away. Right. Mm -hmm. But grief can happen in a divorce, Mm -hmm. in a long friendship. You know, y'all may not be friends anymore. Leaving a job Mm -hmm. like grief can just I mean, you can grieve over so many different things. And I think for me that, you know, as my son, I want him to be able to feel comfortable with having that conversation or comfortable to show emotion. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, with him now being 10, you know, sometimes, you know, it's hard, you know, with boys, they're like, oh, you shouldn't cry. You shouldn't do this or that. But I always tell him it's, it's safe to cry. That's not a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. And so I think that sometimes, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. um, But men see crying or showing emotion as a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. But me, I don't see it as a sign of weakness. I actually see it as a sign of strength. Yeah, it is a sign of strength. It's actually a little, like, a little, you know, a little turn you on a little bit. You know, I'm like, ooh, he got emotions. Shed a little tear, you know know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, it gets you excited a little bit. So, but I want him to know, like, it's okay to cry about it. It It's okay. And, And to really feel the emotion, because I think a lot of times, you know, men is like, it happened, it's over, on to the next. Mm-hmm. But did you really feel it? Because sometimes mm-hmm. if you don't feel it, you're going to go back to it. Mm-hmm. Right. Or if you don't really go through the emotions, whether it's the crying or the um, the guilt or whatever emotions mm-hmm. that you need to feel. And I think for me having a son, I feel like I want him to be able to be open. I want him to be able to feel like that he can cry about it and nobody's going to judge him. Mm-hmm. And I want him to feel like that you know, he could go to a therapist. Like, therapy is good, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I think, for me, that's what I want to see in our communities, in our black and brown communities. I love that. I love that. That's that's, that's very key, and I think he would be light light years ahead of some of our ancestors because some of our ancestors didn't have the opportunity to show um, their counterparts or show individuals any type of signs of weakness. So the suppression of crying, the suppression of uh, just any type of vulnerability um, was something that they had to show to remain the the pioneer or the backbone of their family, right? Mm-hmm. But now that we're shifted into a new age of understanding, we understand that crying is also a sh- crying is a strength because that means as a man you are in control of your emotions, right? Right. Whenever you suppress emotions, you're not in control of your emotions. You let your emotions control you. That's good because you really don't know how to handle your emotions whenever they happen. So the easiest thing for you to do is just to sweep it under the rug and continue to go about go about your life, and that doesn't that's not a show of strength; that's a show of weakness, right? So we got to just be able to transmute. Transmute is one of my favorite words because it allows us to harness a specific type of energy, harness a specific type of emotion, and then be able to place that emotion into something else. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times transmutation is um, shown through athletes. Mm -hmm. They talk about the pain of an injury. They talk about the loss of a loved one. They talk about um, the loss of a friend and how they transmute that energy to win a championship, right? We sometimes see uh, men crying about a, 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 relationship lo- a relationship loss as a weakness, but Michael Jordan cries when he wins his sixth ring right. and is celebrated, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to be able to champion all types of expressions of emotions in order for us to progress um, You know, it's in the interesting that you said that because I think my son realized that it was okay for him to like cry in front of me when I cried in front of him. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I was you know, going through a divorce. Some of you mm-hmm. may or may not know or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but, and I was very adamant about not letting him see me be weak. Mm-hmm. And then I remember my therapist saying to me, it's okay for him to see you cry mm-hmm. cause it makes you human. Mm-hmm. It makes him to be able to connect with you. And I think sometimes because, especially our black and brown communities, we grew up with strong women, strong mm-hmm. mothers. Like, you didn't see them cry. You saw them work. You you know, they were like, mm-hmm. you know, cracking very, the very whip. Very, 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 very. Right. And so, like, one day I was just like, it was just a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I really was, like, depressed. And I, like, almost committed suicide one day. Wow. And 
after I talking to him, after I got through that and talking to my therapist, and she said, if you feel that emotion, just let it out. Mm-hmm. And so once I did that, like I remember I was in the kitchen cooking and I was just like overwhelmed and, you know, um, and I don't really like to show my emotions because I've always been like, uh, just, you know, you don't do that. Right. right. And so I was in the kitchen cooking and he just kept asking me, was I all right? And I'm just like, why is he asking me? And then like the fifth time that he asked me, I just like just screamed and started crying. Mm-hmm. And and he just like looked at me and I was like, it's OK. Like, you know, it's, it's OK to cry. It's OK to have your moment. You know, sometimes you need to you need, you need to do that to let it yeah. out. And so now I see that he's more comfortable. I think if women, you know, be more comfortable around men showing that that's vulnerability that yeah. they will. That's do a it divine too. feminine yeah. energy that men need. I was yeah. going to ask you, like him, like, do you think it's do you think it's important for us to uh, redefine weakness? Yeah. So, you know, before I get into that, I think it's really important. And I'm glad that you you set the stage by talking about the different contexts and different conditions of grief, because, you know, once we identify the conditions of grief, we are then able to understand whether it is that we are experiencing grief. There's so many of us who are experiencing grief and we may not even know it. Mm -hmm. And so because we don't know it, we're not able to show up for ourselves Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we're not able to show up for the people in our worlds. For sure. Right? And so I think that's important to speak about the conditions of grief as well as the different indicators of grief, right? Because grief has a very, very physiological response to us, right? We can't eat. We can't sleep. And that then impacts us in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. Um, But in in terms of your question about weakness, I believe that the conversation is changing. Mm -hmm. Um, For myself personally, I recall like I was on a plane one day and I was traveling maybe for about four weeks in a row. And I just felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. And there was just so much that I was experiencing at that time. And while I was on the plane, I just started crying. This was in late 2021. And um, I didn't know what it was that I was feeling at the time, I just knew that this was the first time in my life that I wasn't going to wipe my tears, right? It wasn't about me not wanting to be visible for crying. I just allowed myself to have that moment. And in that moment, as I was in the plane, a beautiful black elder, beautiful woman came to me and she was the, the, uh, the flight attendant. And she, she came to me and she said, everything will be okay as long as you allow yourself to process. And she gave me a warm towel and it was like that small towel just felt like she had just given me permission. Mm. She had given me the permission to grieve in a way that I have never given myself. It was deep. Mm. And that was the first time that I allowed myself to just have that, 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 that crying moment. And that had be- began my journey of processing grief. Mm. Right. And, and that's when historically I would have felt that was a weak moment. Mm-hmm. But I believe that was one of my strongest moments. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, hey, man, you you got me over here. Like I'm going through so many emotions myself, just thinking about my past, my you know this 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 past situations, the past growth, the past obstacles, the past journeys, the the and I've been in situations like you've been in as well. It's just like it just gets to that point where we just go 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 go, and it's like. We, we put it off, we push it to the side, we focus on our goals, we focus on our aspirations, we focus on our purpose, but we never really took the time to focus on self, mm-hmm. like the true understanding of self, the true understanding of what do, when was the last time you looked in the mirror and asked yourself, what do I need right now, right? And so like, just listening to what you were saying, like the woman giving you that warm towel was kind of like your mother giving you a big hug For sure. in that moment. Her right. energy, I just, energy. I just, I just felt it. Right. Right? She was an older right. woman, and was like, you could tell that she had experienced something, and right. she saw me, and 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 that was a moment that was just so important for me. Yes, man. And and, and Rod, how 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 does that how does that make you feel? You know, just as being the elder of this group, mm-hmm. right, the OG. Um, what have been your your experiences? Because I'm pretty sure you've had, yeah. you know, more fruitful experiences when it comes down to grief over your life, um, what, have been some, what has been your experience with grief? Yeah, and, and thank you guys for being um, honest and, and, and talking about weakness and talking about crying and, and, um, and, and grief, period. So, and, I've, and I've had some time to kind of reflect because of my experiences as it relates to grief. And the thing that, that I go back to is um, relationship, right? And <clears throat> because I've experienced death, 
I've experienced loss and, and, you know, relationships. And, and I'm talking about, when I say relationship, I'm talking about the relationship, say, with a vocation or the relationship with an individual or the relationship with a, a, a thing, right? Mm -hmm. A business or a house or, or whatever it is. And, and what I've, what I've concluded is that the level of grief or the pain or the heaviness has a direct correlation with the level of closeness in the relationship. Mm. Right. So, so much so to cycle. Yeah, absolutely. So say, say there's an, an artist that uh, impacts you, right? And we were having a conversation about uh, Biggie, right? Think about how many people that Biggie impacted with his music and communicated with through his music and formed a, a relationship or influence with his music. So when he died, it was like, you know, you felt it, right? right. You had a- It was in direct correlation with the impact mm -hmm. that he's had. Absolutely, right. direct correlation. So, um, I, you, you know, that's why, you know, you see, say a, a husband dies and, and the wife is criticized because she's not screaming and, and, and falling over the floor and snotting and crying mm -hmm. is because they weren't close, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I examine, like, my relationship with the thing or the person or the, the entity as it relates to the loss. I examine that, and that helps me with, with the grief, right? And so I have to also... Um, remind myself of, of the preparation that I did in the relationship for possible loss. I believe everything has some type of expiration date. For sure. Right? And sure. so, like, a lot of times we don't prepare for certain things. Like, we don't prepare for loss. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, we think we, it's bad juju. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We don't prepare mm -hmm. for loss. Right. So I'm not saying manifest loss. Right. I'm not suggesting that at all. Right. But I'm suggesting, like, what happens on Thanksgiving morning and you pull the turkey out the oven and it hits the floor and oh, everybody's getting ready to come in, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. to, for Thanksgiving dinner. Have you thought about what plan B would be in mm -hmm. that case? So I'm not saying, yeah, you want to throw the turkey on the floor. I'm just saying, man, you know, how would you respond to that? So, um, so yeah, I think... Um, I think, you know, grief is definitely personal. And when it, when it comes to crying at this point, like, it's cleansing for me, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, now sometimes I wipe the tears, like, because I'll cry at, if, if it's a sports movie and the underdog wins, and they got that music. <laughs> down bad. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, you know. Hit you a certain you way. Know, but, um, you know, publicly, um, I had a, uh, we had a birthday um, dinner for my youngest daughter. And I had to speak and talk about, you know, she turned 16. And I had to talk about, you know, her and her life up to that point. And I, I cried like a baby. And mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't care. So, um, so yeah, uh, a, a good cry is cleansing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. That Absolutely. emotional release is important. Yeah. Absolutely. You need that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting that you said that because um, one of my girlfriends, um, when I was going through my grief, um, told me to visualize myself in the shower with like mud and, and dirt mm. on me right cry let it all out and let it just go right on down the drain and it was so therapeutic for me yeah. and I remember sharing that you know with my son and you know he'll be like he literally when he this might be TMI but when he showers shower he in the shower for for Ever. And I'm like, what That's are you me. doing? He's like, I'm releasing all of it. <laughs> He's like, I'm releasing all the bad right. energy. And I'm just like, okay. But, you know, I think that that is what you say. It's so therapeutic, crying and just, yeah. like, visualizing it, just leaving and just... Going, going somewhere, but not, yeah. not in you anymore. I think that that's, yeah. that's, that's powerful. And I think this conversation is essential because, you know, we only are going to define grief and weakness in correlation to the things that we see, mm -hmm. Right. So, like, if the main things that we see is a strong father that works all the time to provide for his family and a hardworking mother that has to be stern mm -hmm. and direct and disciplined um, individual and we never see anything outside of that, then that's what we have defined as strength. Mm -hmm. And so as we grow older and we age and we read and we go through our life experiences, we then start to redefine things mm -hmm. and say, hold on. What I, what I, you know, I love my upbringing. I love my parents. I love my siblings. I love all this. But what I saw wasn't directly 
in proportionate to the life I want to have now as an adult or how, what the things I want to instill in my children, right? And so as we go through those stages, we have to first be able to identify, like, grief. So there's three types of grieving. There's numbness, um, busyness, and emotional restriction, right? Numbness is what we talked about earlier. It's just sweeping it under the rug and being able to just go focus. Like, you ever see some people, some people can lose their mother on a Friday and they at work on a Monday. And it's just like nothing has happened because they're going through that process of numbing the pain, that's right? Me. That's you? Yeah. That's so, I mean, me. that's, uh-huh. import- that's important, yeah. to, that's well, important that to identify. Me. Well, I think, that you know, was I think me. Also yeah. to that, right, we were never formally educated on how to grieve right. or absolutely. in lessons of emotional intelligence, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? And so you almost have to, it's an experiential knowledge, mm-hmm. right? That's the only way that you'll understand how to process grief is to inherently experience grief. It's like learning on the job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Like it, when, when it comes down to emotional intelligence, us as a community is learning on the job. Mm-hmm. Like we're learning as we go through life versus being prepared with the scrolls or being prepared with the tenets of emotional intelligence. And as a young man and young woman, right. this is what you enact whenever you experience these things. Um, so it's kind of like we're going through this process and then we're learning and then kind of rebuilding ourselves as we progress, right? Busyness is a big one for mm-hmm. a lot of people, mm-hmm. right? It's, the, it's, that, it's, that, it's, that, it's that it's your grandmother who's 85 years old and been married to your grandfather since she was 20, and she just lost her best friend of 60 years, right? But she's in the kitchen cooking, cleaning, okay. mm-hmm. um, tending to everybody else, never really taking the time to really sit down. Right, that's busyness. That's a way of that's a that's an actual way of grieving, right? And then emotional restriction is that it's almost on the borderline of the transmutation, but it's more so as in you experience these emotions and you immediately shut them down and move them to somewhere else, right? So you you begin to cry, but you stop yourself, you pack it up and you put it to the side, right? Or you or you begin to scream and you stop yourself, you pack it up and you put it to the side. So you're emotionally restricting yourself from experiencing the natural emotions of going through grief. And I think it's important for us to be able to identify those three things because um, it's essential to the building blocks of, of, of reframing and putting how we deal with emotional intelligence, intelligence in another framework, yeah, right? I, We're I, seeing it from another perspective. So, I mean, you, you guys are spot on. I think um, emotional intelligence is, is not a, a popular topic. I don't know. It's not sexy. It's Mm -hmm. not sexy. I don't know about y'all, but uh, until recently, it it wasn't even, uh, you know, emotional intelligence wasn't even on my radar, right? And so I think what happens, um, a part of the grief process, um, we're learning on the job, but I think there's still rules of engagement, right? And so, like, whenever a stimuli happens, there's a moment in time that, that, that occurs, and we either react or we respond. And I think when it comes to those who have higher emotional intelligence, you know, they respond versus reacting, right? Indeed. And so That's true. The, true. the response can help um, usher you through the grieving process much better, I believe, mm-hmm. versus a reaction. Because the reaction may be, I'm going to get busy. Mm-hmm. Or the reaction may be, I'm going to sweep this under the rug mm-hmm. and become numb versus mm-hmm. let me take, let me pause and let some time Pass and that time may be an hour, it may be a day, and then let me respond to the stimuli that caused or created the grief, mm-hmm. and that will help me, I believe, get me through that. You know, get me through Absolutely. that better. Absolutely, yeah. I, I agree with that. And um, from the perspective of processing grief, really requires, for me at least, some solitude, right? Mm-hmm. And if you're not comfortable in that solitude, then it's it's really hard for you to to really really sit with that grief. Mm -hmm. And so the way that I like to look at it is that while processing grief, really what grief does is it unmasks you in a way, Mm -hmm. right? There's a certain level of humility that you experience while grieving because for my very self, while experiencing grief, this is like the very, one of the few times I'm able to really admit to myself that I don't have the answers Mm -hmm. and that I need to be in solitude to, to, to reason with myself, to experience. I think also in the context of grief, we really speak about it mostly with a, a bit of a somber undertone, yeah. but there's really another side to it, right? Where, yes, you are really revealed to yourself in moments of grief. And um, 
Baldwin says that what hurts a man and what helps a man cannot be divorced from one another mm -hmm. because what hurts you in a certain way mm -hmm. helps you in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And really what that is, it's that's a, a positive reframing on a really negative experience mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to really understand that there really is another side to grief. But in order for you to get to that other side of grief, you have to be willing to, in my opinion, front load it and mm -hmm. experience it in solitude and, and, and not have to deal, and not really succumb to the numbness, the busyness, or the emotional restriction that you had mentioned. It didn't happen, it didn't happen to me, it happened for me. Yes. And then yes. what I'm doing is I'm looking for that silver lining, right? I'm looking for that silver lining in this grieving process. And then when you think about, um, and I'm not a grief expert, but just, just processing it for myself, um, when you think about grief or when, when, when grief appears, it's because something was lost, right? And if something is lost, that means I'm going to miss it, right? And so if I, if I miss it, then I, I believe I might be missing the benefits of it, right? And then if, if, if I'm thinking I'm missing the benefits of it, I might be questioning if I can ever find those benefits somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah. you right. know, so I have, the, I have the loss, I have the missing it, I have, you know, possibly not experiencing the benefits that I experienced before. And so then it's a matter of, okay, how, how can I continue to experience these benefits? I can experience these benefits through, so, through thought, through experience, um, just reflection, um, and then other places, other people, you know, places or things, so. Absolutely. Seven Twelve Vodka, distilled only once from Blue Ridge Mountain Water. Alkaline and gluten-free, 712 Vodka is perfect for sipping or mixing when you want to enjoy the finer things in life. Serve up 712 Vodka and reflect with us on the happenings that have made you who you are. I was going to ask um, Yolanda, how do you personally process loss? So I've had a lot of loss happen to me within a small amount of time. And um, I would just say, like, I don't know if I can cuss, but stuff hit, the, what you need to shit hit the fan. <laughs> yeah. right? Express yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. Shit, like, really hit the fan. Like, you know, I was, like, going through a separation divorce I was going through trying to figure out who I was outside of that life trying to I was at a job where I was oh my god miserable feeling like I was being harassed to a certain extent and you know getting ready to but getting ready to leave that so it was a little bit of excitement but I've been there for so long so it's you know some grief attached to that mm -hmm. and you know family members passing so it was just like boom 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 and like I seriously I felt lost and I didn't know who, like who I was anymore. And I almost took my life. Like I, my son and I came home from church. It was on, a, it was on an Easter Sunday. I put him in his room, gave him his snacks and went in my room. And I'm one of those people that I, you know, sometimes I, I just got to be in control. Right. So I'm like, I had an email sent to my mom, delayed sin, sent to my, um, my son's father, you know, just my wishes of what I want to happen and, you know, where everything is, where everybody need to get access to. And then I had a text message that I was going to send my girlfriend um, to let her know just to come get my son. And I'm in the room because it's like and it's interesting because it's like sometimes you don't even know you're dealing with stuff. Right. Because mm -hmm. you're just you're on the go. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm literally in the room on in my I locked myself in the closet like I had it all like planned out like this is it like I'm done. And I didn't even know that I was grieving, right? And so I'm in there, I'm crying, and I'm like, Lord, like, seriously, like, if I need to be here, you need to let me know now. And so my phone rings. Like, this is the most spookiest, spooky deep thing I've ever mm -hmm. experienced, my phone ring. And it was mm -hmm. this lady on the phone. And I haven't spoken to her in, like, years. And she's like, I've been trying to call you all, all day. Like, how are you doing? You know, me, you know, we suck it up. Like, I'm okay. Like, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. like, you know, hey, how you doing? And she said to me, she said, I've been trying. She said, this is my third time trying to call you today. And she said, every time I tried to call you, the Holy Spirit said, not yet. And she said, I'm on the side of the highway. I'm just leaving church. And the Holy Spirit said, call her now. And so she called me and she says, um, the song by Tasha Cobbs, you know my name, mm -hmm. um, was like really big at the time. And she said, Every time I hear that song, I think about you. 
And she's like, she said, I know you're grieving. And I was just like, wait, what? Like, I didn't even, I, I was like, what? You know, that kind of like, I didn't, I heard what she said, but I was just, I didn't even think that that was a thing, mm -hmm. right? For a person like me, who's always strong, I'm always there for everyone. I, I'm the always person. Always in control. I'm the, always in control. Right. I'm the person that holds everything together. Like, what? I'm really mm -hmm. grieving, you know? And so, and she was like, you know, God's not done with you. He knows your name. And, you know, she said a whole bunch of other, but it was basically like, girl, you got this mm -hmm. from where my devotional came from, right? And so, in that moment, I get up, and then um, I had one of my other girlfriends, um, First Lady Karen Bullock, and her husband, um, Brian Bullock, Pastor Brian Bullock, um, they're the pastors of Union Church in Charlotte that's getting ready to launch in January, mm -hmm. had um, just put me a grief book in the mail. And it was just like, it really started to expose me on what grief was. And, you know, I've had my father passed away. It was just like all of this stuff was happening, and I just didn't know how to process it. But I think now when things happen to me, I always take a step back, whatever it is, whether it's a death, whether it's like, you know, you know, losing someone or losing a friendship or, you know, transitioning. And I always take a step back to say, okay, what's happening? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I think, I think that's important. We yeah. don't really ask ourselves that because we're so busy trying to keep up. For sure. We don't say, Yo, like, what's what's really going on right now? You like, you're tripping, but you don't even know you're tripping. Like, what's really happening? And I think once I started to do that, I learned how to, you know, really, really like grieve and and be okay with the things that have. Because I, I was like, I was grieving from stuff that has happened in my childhood, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's like trauma that you don't, you don't even does, like, you don't even realize. But it it's just, away. you know, I think for me, like having those, I always say, have key people in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Have those people that you know, they know when something's wrong with you, even though when you don't know something's wrong with you. And I thank God for the lady that called me that day, even though I hadn't spoken with her, but just that divine connection that we had for her to know, like, wait a minute, like something's not, something's not right. Cause she really saved my life. Cause I, I shouldn't be here talking to any of y'all. Oh, absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so when I got myself out of that room that day, I said, my life, my life needs to change. And so that emotional intelligence, I started to research all of those, what you mentioned, all of those different things, because, you know, women, we get so like, we get prideful too. You know, we live in our, we always living in our masculine energy and mm -hmm. we don't know how to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And so I think once I started asking for help, seeking therapy, like really like surrounding myself with like good people, people that like understood what grief was, understood like trauma, like it really helped me to be able to like go through all of those different levels and stages of my life because you know, grief can pile up. Absolutely. And once it's piled up, it's like a bunch of shit. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's no, like, yeah. it really is. And I appreciate you yeah. sharing. I appreciate you being vulnerable yeah. and, and sharing that because uh, I think some somebody's going to hear that and be able to resonate with that. Um, I think there's a lot of people that have been in that in the same situation you've been in, um, hitting rock bottom and really not knowing. You look right, there's issues over here. You look left, there's issues over there, and you really don't know kind of where to go. Right. Um, and and I, and I thank you for um, kind of having the tenacity to. But you know what's also work. interesting yeah. is that I shared that with my son. Good. And um, and I didn't really share it with him intentionally. I had a, um, a devotional launch and I shared the story with everybody was there. And anytime I do like he, you know, that's that's my number one fan. So mm -hmm. he's there. And afterwards, um, we had went home. And um, I had people over and then, you know, he was in my room and then he was like, mommy, can you come here real quick? And so that opened up for me to have that conversation. That's why I love the fact that you're doing this and you're talking Thank about you. those different topics, because I just see it so much in our black and brown communities. Like our, our boys, they don't know that it's OK to cry. They don't know about grief. They don't know. Oh, my God. Like my dad just left. He's never coming back. Like, how do I even process mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And I think that it's so important that we share and we open, especially with our children, with our friends, because all of my, I'm the strong one for all of my friends. Mm -hmm. And only like one other person knew that that had even happened to me. And when I shared it in a room with everybody, they were just like, wait, what? Like, like, like you yeah. go through stuff too. And, 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 it, may, right. and it makes you human. Yeah, it makes you human. It makes yeah, you human. Sure. So, yeah. For sure. You, you mentioned a word of control, mm -hmm. right? I think in a lot of ways when we're experiencing grief, there's so much uncertainty there. Right. Mm -hmm. And when there's uncertainty you're not able to get control of that mm -hmm. environment, right? And so because of that uncertainty, you almost 
kind of panic a bit. Um, what I realized with grief is that I liked who I became when I started to allow myself to grieve. Oh my God, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Like mm -hmm. the empathy. Yeah. I learned that when I had the levels of vulnerability and the empathy, I was able to then start to have better connections with people, right? Where otherwise I would just suppress it. And you realize that when you allow yourself to grieve, it's not just that one thing that you, that just recently happened that you're grieving over. It's the many years previously yes. of the things that you have grieved. And yes. so you're allowing those things to now release. And so when you mentioned the word of control, that's the first thing I thought about is that the deep uncertainty that comes when we're experiencing grief. Yes. And so as we allow ourselves to front load that, um, I also think that when you are experiencing grief, it often feels like you're alone. Mm -hmm. But what, you, what, what I learned was that you're amongst great company because once you allow yourself to communicate your story in the same way that you got that phone call and then you start to realize that there's other people who are experiencing that in the very way that you said, you realize that you're amongst great company. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like, like I'm, I like to conceptualize things. It, it helped. That's my way. That's my process of grieving, right? Like understanding, diving deeper, doing my, my shadow work, mm -hmm. um, doing my meditations, right? Um, I'm, I'm more so, I'm not, I'm not a traditionalist. Um, I'm more so, my faith is, is, my faith is in self. I believe in the knowledge of self. Absolutely. I study all kinds of sacred texts, all kinds of religions, all, all kinds of everything. And, and one thing that all religions have in common is love and mm -hmm. unconditional love. Um, and I think that's the process that I've gone through as a man is, is coming into the understanding of uh, what do you need in each moment? Um, being mindful in those moments, right? Mm -hmm. And appreciating like what you, like him and, and Yolanda was saying is that that darkness and you don't know where to go and you out mm -hmm. of control, that's nothing but void. But whenever God created the universe, there was a void, yeah. right? And then lightness was, then light was created, right? And so we always have to go back to the genesis of the universe and say like if darkness is void that's an opportunity for us to create mm -hmm. and creativity is the essence of all of us in this right. room mm -hmm. it's really the ability to create the reality that you want the relationships that you want the businesses that you want the opportunities that you want right the creativity is what really drives us to be us mm -hmm. and the creativity can be applied to every sector of our lives um because it allows us to kind of paint a canvas yeah. of what that beautiful picture is, mm -hmm. what we call life to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think what's really important to your audience is what you just said in terms of your blueprint to deal with grief. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, first of all, we don't know what's going on. We don't know that it's quote unquote grief, mm -hmm. right? But like the person that has anxiety attacks, they know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like they've been coached on what to do when you have this anxiety attack or if you have an asthma attack, but I don't know that people know or have an idea of things to do when grief shows up. Mm -hmm. right. right. So to know that about yourself, that you need to meditate, that you need to maybe pray or, you know, get alone. Um, that's, that's real dope because having, um, I guess a, uh, a roadmap for dealing with grief Absolutely. for yourself Absolutely. individually, that's, that's huge. And I, I would suggest that people just kind of um, maybe think about some situations that they've had in the past and um, to try to come up with that. Try to mm -hmm. identify, okay, when this thing called grief shows up, here are some of the things that I can do that make sense for me. Mm -hmm. Because when I first saw the topic, the first thing that came to my mind was, you know, men should grieve, you know, in truth and in, in their truth, and which is going to be very, very unique to each individual. So. Mm -hmm. Coming up with with ways to um, handle grief for for yourself is um, I think is, is is primo. What yeah. you said was key. Like, mm -hmm. what's your truth? Right. Like, what is customizable <clears throat> to you? Not not really comparing right. your experience to anybody else's. I think one of the yeah. best things I told uh, one of my boys on the phone yesterday, at like I don't know what time it was, like seven eight o'clock in the morning. He was just like, man, like you know, I'm making a push. I'm making a push for these partnerships. I'm making a push. For this, and I told him, I said, man, one of the biggest things that I did, um, you know, just studying my African spirituality and my comedic science is that I got a spiritual advisor. Mm -hmm. And, like, that spiritual advisor has been able to guide me 
provide readings, provide intellect, provide insight, provide spiritual guidance on a level beyond this dimension. Cause some people are just talented mm -hmm. and blessed with that, that, that they're really placed on this earth to guide people. And he was like, man, you like the seven person that told me that Absolutely. I said, yo, yeah. I said, it's all divine it's because true. you, whenever you're operating on a certain frequency, you're going to run into individuals and have the same conversations and in tune with those things that you need in that moment. And so even with myself, like going through grief, uh, having a spiritual advisor has shown me to look at death in a different type of way. Absolutely. Because one of the first things they teach you is that energy can't be created or mm -hmm. destroyed. It right. just transform, transitions into yeah, yeah. and transforms yeah. into another uh, entity, yeah. right? And so whenever you start to look at that and you say, hold on, energy can't be destroyed. So the person I just quote unquote lost wasn't a loss. Just, yeah. That person is now transitioning into a different type of energy and I can access that energy. So that yeah. person is always with yes, me. Absolutely. So it shifts your perspective on death because you no longer walk around trying to fill the void mm -hmm. of your father. I no longer walk around trying to fill the void of my uncle yeah. or whomever you've lost. I now look at that as that it's not a loss. Right. Like we all can, we all take L's. It's just about if you're going to call it a lesson or you're going to call Absolutely. it a loss. Yeah. It's your perspective. Yeah, it's all about the perspective mm -hmm. that you take. Um, and I just want to big you all up, man. This has Thank you. been a therapy session for me. For sure. Yeah, that's good. You know what I'm saying? For it's sure, been absolutely. very fruitful. Um, I've, I've learned a lot. I've taken notes, mental notes from, from each of you. And I think whenever our listeners hear this, um, I think it's going to be some groundbreaking um, experiences internally, which each individual that hears this, because it's a conversation that needs to be had. Um, I felt like I just, you know, me and my father went to therapy. I went to therapy individually. I felt like I just, you know, when you come out of therapy, you just have that fog mm -hmm. over you. It's not right. a negative experience. <laughs> yeah. It's just like right. you just put out so much mental power. And I feel like that's exactly what I've just experienced. So. Uh, much love, man. Thank much you, love. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you all for the vulnerability. Um, thank you all for sharing. Thank you all for, for just sharing, letting people see the insight of who you are as humans internally. And um, I think it's going to be essential to the healing of yourself and the healing of our people. So much love, man. Peace. Thank you. Thank you. For my brothers never had an ear to hear me. These the bricks for our sisters help us build it. If I could be a black fly on the wall, I can hear and see it all and have the mind of a god. Black, 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 black. Fly, 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 fly. Black, black, black.